in Guyana, uh, I believe it was in Georgetown, they have this prison and the prison walls um, only went up so high and the building was pretty close to the walls and it went up much higher and that's where the prisoners were. So prisoners would actually stand at the windows and would have conversations with people in the streets, uh, family members or whatever, and, and, uh, and they would holler at us to um, and say hello and, and call out names to us. One of the big things was calling us uh, was uh, calling us Jim Jones because that actually there was this uh, this white guy that came down to Guyana. Um, I, I want to say it was in the in the eighties that where he set up this church and um, uh, had this big tent and had all these people in it. And, um, I don't know how many people, but I think it was um, probably like it was hundreds of people if I remember correctly. And, um, and he made them all drink Kool-Aid and it was poisoned and they were all sacrificing them. He was making sure that they all and himself sacrificed themselves and everybody died. He killed all these people that were down there. You have to look up the story, but because we were white and we were out there teaching religion, they would mock us and, and call us Jim Jones. And, uh, and we would say, no, no, we're, we're just giving out Kool-Aid samples. And they would laugh. I think it was, it was, it was a good comeback because it showed, hey, Obviously, we're not them, because why would we say that? And but we're funny, and then they a lot of times they'd call us over, get over here, and talk to us. And uh, so that's a good response if anybody calls you Jim Jones. Say no, just giving out Kool Aid samples. You want some? And they, you know, they laugh about it. It's probably not a very uh, funny thing to laugh about, but they but but they do anyway. But, uh, but it, was, it was sad. The guy's a little rough. It's a little little rough of a of, of a town. Um, I was stabbed uh, in uh, in Guyana. Had to go to the hospital. Um, I have this uh, stitch right here, uh, or scar from stitches. Uh, one of the good things about uh, about the West Indies, and in particular Guyana, is that you you tend to ignore um, a lot of the downsides to Guyana. You you ignore the crime, you ignore the smell, you ignore the ignore the pollution, mainly because the people are amazing. The people are going to be the best people that you'll ever meet in all of the West Indies, in each of the countries, Barbados and Trinidad and Guyana that I've ever, that I've ever seen. They're, they're humble, they, they laugh at themselves, they laugh at others. I don't know if I've ever really offended anybody down there. I don't think they get offended. They're just, they're just such amazing people. And because the people are amazing and the food is amazing, then it's, it's really hard to, I mean, it's really easy to ignore uh, all, the, all, the, all the rough edges that the country has. The country is very, very musical. Uh, there'd, there'd be speakers that would align the streets and you'd walk down and you'd hear, you'd hear Calypso music, you'd hear uh, Indian Hindi music, you would hear um, Celine Dion, you know, you'd hear all sorts of stuff uh, going down the street and they would even have these trucks that they would pile speakers in, in the, in the, in the truck and have a DJ there and he'd drive in and out of towns and people would follow and dance along. It almost looked like a parade, but it's just a random <laughs> musical like ice cream truck <laughs> or whatever. And people would just dance along, but not give ice cream out. But, uh, but they, but when I was there and I'm probably the same now, they, they still use carton uh, and horse and they'd have a, a, you know, a horse and you'd have this long wagon that would hold wood and and we'd hitch rides with those guys all the time. And they have these uh, buses uh, that you take and that were like cabs. Uh, some of them would just be minivans and you'd be, uh, you'd be surprised to see how many people you can fit in a minivan. And when they're trying to get their fare, and trying to get you know, as much money as they can, they'll pack some people in there. There's so much that they'll actually keep the sliding door open and the, the guy collecting the money. So you have a driver and you have a guy that collects the money and he'll hold on to the handlebar and hold on to something else and kind of support more people so they don't fall out, which I, I always thought was, was awesome. There was, uh, while I was down there, they appointed a, a female, a uh, white female president. And I'd say 99.99% of people in the West Indies are either um, African American descent or East Indian and uh, probably a few other countries, but, uh, but no, very few white people. And they appointed a white president and that caused a lot of uh, issues. Everybody went on strike and the hospital, including the hospital went on strike and everybody vacated the hospital and just left patients lying in bed and no one was there to take care of the patients. So they asked the missionaries to come in as scabs, if you will, to help move patients around, help care for patients. And funny story, 
we were all standing around and the hospital director was assigning different people to, to different things. He says, anybody have any experience in laundry facilities? And, uh, and they were like, oh, I, I can do that. What about in cooking? You know, oh, we'll go help in the kitchen. And, and he says, what about in the theater? Anybody have any theater experience? Well, I had, before my mission, I had managed the movie theater for three years. So I said, yeah, I have, I have theater experience. It's weird that they would have a theater there. And so me and my companion go up there and they say, okay, start scrubbing in right here. And we're like, scrubbing in for, for a theater? For a movie theater? What are you talking about? And he says, no, no, for the surgery the surgical theater, and which was they called where you have surgery, and uh, which I guess is I, didn't, I guess I didn't know, and and uh, I, I found later I'm not the only one that didn't know that, but I, I guess that's a common term even here in the U.S. that the the surgery room is the is the surgical theater. So they said, well, you're here anyway. So they taught me how to be a, a like a scrub nurse. They showed me the different things, and I had to scrub in for the doctors and hand them scalpel and scissors and everything. And I remember seeing a couple surgeries. We saw a, a C-section and. Yeah, I mean, my companion, we saw some interesting stuff, but we transported patients all over the hospital, and, and that, was a, that was an experience. It was fun. It was interesting.